I wanted to make this quick video to go through problem number five uh, from the, the practice problem set on marginal analysis. We did not uh, have time to complete number five in class. Problem number five is very similar to the previous problem um, in that it uses what we call the equimarginal principle. The previous problem, we applied the equimarginal principle to a consumer uh, decision-making problem. The consumer had two goods, Pepsi and Snickers, and we had to decide how many of each good the individual, the consumer, would purchase given the, the budget constraint. Well, this is a very similar problem, except in this case we're not dealing with a financial budget constraint, but rather a, a time constraint. The problem says that a life insurance salesman spends nine hours a week on telephone soliciting uh, new clients. From past experience, the salesman estimates that each hour spent calling students, blue-collar workers, and professionals will, will produce the following number of sales, and that is given to us here in the table that you see. And then we are to determine uh, how the life insurance salesman should allocate his nine hour budget, his nine hour uh, limitation, in order to maximize the number of sales. Well the first thing we do is remember that all decisions are made at the margin. And so we want to compute the marginal benefit from each hour spent uh, soliciting clients from each category of customers. So we compute the margin, that's an M believe it or not, the margin by looking at the change in sales as we spend an additional hour for each category of customers. So the marginal benefit from spending an extra hour, the first hour, for students would be 10. Again, that's the change in the total. For the second student, the margin is 8. And then we continue on with 6, 4, 1, and 0. The marginal benefit of the sixth hour soliciting students is 0. We do the same, compute the margin for blue collar workers, that would be 8. 6, 4, 3, 1, and 0, and then the margin for professional professionals would be 14, 11, 8, 6, 4, and 1. Now, the equimarginal principle tells us that we have to equate the marginal benefit per dollar spent on each good. Well, this is not a problem with a financial budget constraint. This is a problem with a time constraint. And spending an hour soliciting students is the same hour spent soliciting blue collar workers and professionals. It doesn't take longer to solicit a student than it does a blue collar worker or a professional. So this problem would be very similar to a consumer problem where all the goods had the same price. where We didn't have to worry about one good being less expensive than another. So the point is we don't have to divide by any value. We have the margin and in effect each of these values represents the marginal benefit per hour spent for each category of customer. So at this point, we can solve the problem one of two ways. We can approach this by looking at how the salesman would spend each hour, one hour at a time. Obviously, his first hour of sales would be spent soliciting professionals. Why? Because it gives him the most bang per hour, the most extra sales per hour. In fact, not only would he spend his first hour with professionals, he would also spend the second hour. And then the third hour, we would drop down to 10 and solicit students. And so we would continue this until we have spent the nine hour budget. Or 
Alternative, we, alternatively, we can approach this problem as we would any other equimarginal problem. We simply look for that combination, that combination of students, blue-collar workers, and professionals where the marginal benefit per hour is equal across all students. So we see, first of all, I'm going to change color, we see here that there is an equality at eight sales per hour. However, at two, one, and three, we are not exhausting our nine-hour limit. Two conditions for the equimarginal principle to be applied. We find where the marginal benefit per hour spent is equal across all three categories of customers, but also we have to satisfy the restriction, the nine hour constraint. Well, that doesn't occur here, so we keep going and we find that six, six, and six, three hours spent soliciting students, two hours spent soliciting blue collar workers, now we're up to five hours and then four hours spent soliciting professionals. Now we're up to our nine hour limit. So the solution, three hours for students, two hours for blue collar workers, and then four hours for professionals and this will yield the maximum number of sales. By the way, that maximum number is 24 plus 14 plus 39. Take out your calculator. That will be the maximum number of sales that our life insurance salesman can accumulate with his nine hour restriction. I hope this helps. There are a few problems similar to this on your homework. So hopefully this will help you as you work through those problems.